Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to today's video and we are going to be looking at filtration today, especially how I run a canister filter on this SPS dominant reef tank. So firstly, I just wanna say thank you to all of you who have been subscribing to my channel, following along and adding comments. Um, I really do appreciate it and it really helps me to see what you're after if you type in comments down below. So today's video comes at the request of many people, which is how do I keep this system, an SPS dominant reef tank, filtered with just a canister filter? So I also want to preface this, if you're here today looking at this particular video, why would this be useful for you if you're running a sump? Well, let's talk about that. If you've ever thought about setting up a second frag system, or if you've ever thought about transferring over from the freshwater hobby, or you're transferring friends over from the freshwater hobby into the saltwater hobby, a canister filter is a great inexpensive way of getting people into the hobby, but also setting up a secondary system. It happens to be my primary filter, but that being said, sumps, I can definitely see the value in them. They are great, they are versatile, and they also come with some drawbacks as well. The same goes for canister filtration. So today what we're gonna look at is some of the pros and some of the cons and how I work around some of the common problems and misconceptions that people have with a canister filter. Firstly, uh, one of the things that we have to acknowledge is that a lot of people online say that a canister filter is a little bit of a nitrate factory. And that's something that I believe to be not a problem of canister filters, but actually a problem of users. So let's jump behind the camera and we'll talk about how I run a canister filter on this tank. Okay everyone, so let's talk about why I chose a canister filter for this system. The first reason is that I used to run a sump as well, and sumps are great. In actual fact, before I even set up this aquarium, I had another aquarium exactly the same that was actually drilled with an overflow. But one of the biggest drawbacks of running a sump filtration system is that you are inevitably left with some sort of black box overflow inside of the aquarium. Now don't get me wrong, there are some very streamlined, thin overflow systems out there, but to me, a big black box sitting inside of an aquarium is just unacceptable. That being said, if I could also get, as someone pointed out here, a glass MP40, I could probably do that as well. But that's one of the main reasons why I chose a canister filter. It wasn't so much for the actual filtration efficiency of a canister filter, but it was actually the aesthetics. And that's something that I want people to consider when you're setting up a system, is that the aesthetics of the system itself is quite important. And a canister filter allowed me to run glass lily pipes. So, glass lily pipes, what are they? If you take a look at the top right side of my aquarium over here, you will see that there is an inflow and an outflow and they're made of glass, which means that they practically disappear. If you look at the top, there is a surface skimmer attached to this particular lily pipe set, and that enables all of the surface film to get sucked into the filter when you run the system. The other thing it allows for is the filtration to pull in water from the middle of the water column. Uh, what I've noticed is that some of the overflows that are out there only pull in water from the top of the water column. So in this particular setup, we're pulling it from the top and in the middle of the water column. And you'll see as water goes around the system, it inevitably ends up in that back corner as well. So the placement of the pipes is really important. So what I'm gonna do is we will talk about how this canister filter works and some of the special medias. And I'll also give you a little bit of a secret, not so secret secret, how we can add something into our canister filters to help them run a little bit more efficiently. So again, at the top here, it goes into the glass leader pipes and it goes into the cabinet below. Let's take a look at that. So inside of here, what do we have? We have here a Oase Biomaster Thermo 600. And the first thing that the canister filter does is it passes water through the pre-filter unit here. So the pre-filter unit inside of it is essentially a sponge like this, or rather six of them. And I found this to be 
one of the biggest advantages of running the Oase filter. It's because inside of that, all I have to do is flick a switch, pop out the filter, or the pre-filter rather, and then I just have to squish these sponges and that's it. Now, if any of you have ever used a sump with filter socks before, you'll know exactly how difficult it can be to clean those filter socks. You have that ring with a little tab at the top and you have to invert the sock and then wring it out and inevitably you find that the sock is still dirty at the end of the day. This for me is simple. I pull it out, I rinse it, I plop it back in and I don't need to worry. So that's the first stage, is the first mechanical filtration stage. And the other thing that is an advantage of having a pre-filter on your canister filter is that the water always gets polished before it enters your canister filter, which essentially prevents the whole idea of canister filters becoming a bit of a nitrate factory. Because if you clean this every single third day or fourth day, just like a filter sock, you essentially remove most of the organic waste before it even has a chance to break down. The second part, all right, so once it goes through the mechanical filter, it goes into my biological filtration. And the good thing with a canister filter is you can pack it to the brim with biological filtration in there. And I run two different types of media. I run Matrix and I run Saporax, but you can essentially use any sort of media that you want. And my recommendation is to take out the sponges out of the canister filter and instead just run a solid media. Now, there is a third type of special media that I want to show you that will make a canister filter just a little bit more efficient as well as prevent some of the excess nitrogen waste that gets produced by a canister filter. And it's this particular thing here. It's zeolites. So zeolites are really important at absorbing some of the ammonia that goes into a canister filter. I use a particular brand called Aquaforest. It's been reliable and useful for me, but really you can use any sort of zeolite that you can find that is made for aquarium purposes. I would highly recommend that you stay away from any sort of zeolite that's used for any sort of other purpose, whether it be industrial or kitty litter otherwise. But for me, zeolites are a very important part of my filtration. Now, I just wanna preface this. Be careful with using zeolites because zeolites can be extremely aggressive at removing nutrients from the water column. And some people recommend the flow rates for zeolites to be around about 500 liters per hour. Now, if you take a look at some of the Oase canister filters or any of the other canister filters out there, most of them are rated from 1,000 to 1,800 liters per hour. So that's quite a bit of turnover for the use of zeolite. My recommendation is to use roughly a quarter or a third or even half the amount of zeolite that is normally recommended for this system. All right, once it goes through zeolite, then ultimately it ends up in the last part of the mechanical filtration, and that is the carbon and GFO. So carbon and GFO, or granulopheric oxide, essentially removes some of the things that a skimmer can't remove from this system because I don't have a skimmer. So the carbon removes some of the slimes, some of the chemicals, some of the organic waste that builds up and the tannins or the yellowing pigments that occur in the water column. So essentially what happens is when you're running a canister filter with carbon inside of it, you're essentially running a reactor that polishes the water all the time. That little bit of GFO at the end helps to also remove a little bit of phosphate from the water. It's not essential. Now, the next layer of canister filter filtration that I wanna add to this system is this down here. And if you've noticed it before, on the right-hand side here, I've got a Tunzi macroalgae reactor. And this little thing here essentially takes water from the canister filter into here, and it grows Ketomorpha, which is a type of algae that absorbs any of the last remaining amounts of nitrate and phosphate that leaves this canister filter. 
So that's a really simple setup. I mean, if you think about it, these two pieces of equipment together would probably cost less than a skimmer for most people. Or these two pieces of equipment together would probably cost less than a return pump for others. And the beauty of it is that I run it together on the one single motor. It means that I don't have to have multiple accessory pumps. Everything runs together on the same system. A little bit of an added benefit is this particular one here has a heater inside as well. So if you look into the aquarium, you'll see there's actually no heaters at all. Alrighty, so what are some of the disadvantages then of running a canister filter? My first disadvantage that I see is that I can't actually run any sort of controller in this particular setup. Uh, if I were to run a controller, I would need to place the probes into the aquarium. I would also need to place some of the water extraction lines into the aquarium and ultimately I'd need to pour back in the water from the testers into the aquarium as well. So controllers, not so possible. Of course you can do it, it's just something that goes against the elegance of setting up a simple canister filter setup. That's not so much a problem for me. The second issue is that in a sump system, you can actually run a dosing pump setup into the sump and it all gets pre-mixed there. Well, for my system here, I cannot run a dosing pump into the canister filter. However, I can run a dosing pump into the system directly. So I use these acrylic U-pipes that you see up here. And I'll talk about that in another video as to how I keep my water topped up, as well as how I dose this system uh, using a dosing pump. And what sort of dosing pump you actually need when you're actually running a canister filter and trying to pump up supplements into the display. Alrighty, what are some of the other disadvantages as well? Well, with a canister filter, ultimately your filtration is something that sits inside of the cabinet all the time. And what happens there inevitably is that if there is a power outage, that's the heart of your system that is now subject to losing a lot of the biological filtration and all the good bacteria. So my advice is anyone here who runs a canister filter, uh, you should always look into some sort of battery backup option or some sort of generator backup, just in case you find yourself in a spot where your canister filter is no longer running. Alrighty, what's some of the advantages then? Well, the advantages for me, of course, are the clean setup. You can have a really clean set system using a canister filter. I only have one inlet and one outlet here. The next advantage, of course, is power consumption. It requires so much less power to run a canister filter. I mean, most canister filters have 12 watts, 15 watts, 18 watts, 20 watt, uh, I guess, little motors inside of them. And so ultimately, the amount of energy to turn over the entire system is very low. The next thing, of course, is noise. Because you don't have any overflows, you don't have the splashing, you don't have the gurgling, and the biggest bonus as well is spillage. You don't have to worry about back siphoning or water levels dropping or sumps overflowing in a canister filter setup. So in my decade more of running systems with a canister filter, I've only come across one incident personally where a canister filter has leaked and that's because I personally didn't put the lid back on properly. So when it comes to leaking aquariums and canister filters, you're not gonna come across that issue either if you do it properly. So do you have to run a, an Awaze Biomaster Thermo to get this sort of setup? No, you do not. Uh, something that you could do is just take any old cheap canister filter that you have at home and add onto that a pre-filter unit. If you add a pre-filter unit onto that, you've essentially created a canister filter that is serviceable every three to four days. So that's the rundown on how I run a canister filter on this particular setup. I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or just ask me on one of the many groups that I frequent on Facebook and I'll be sure to answer your questions there. Now, the take home from all of this is that if you are thinking about setting up a second system, 
if you are thinking about introducing your friends into the marine hobby, if you're thinking about perhaps simplifying your current setup, because as you know, sumps and all of the accessories that go into it can be really expensive, this is a surefire way to set up a successful reef tank that can and will remove a lot of nutrients. All right, ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.